Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to record the payments that come in from Stripe into your QuickBooks Online account. So the thing to know about Stripe payments is that Stripe, before it sends you the money that your customers sent you, it takes out their fee, the payment merchant processing fee, and it sends you what's called the net amount. So it'll just send you whatever your customer paid you minus the fee is what Stripe will send you. So for example, if your customer paid you $100 and the fee that they that Stripe charged was $5, you would get $95 into your bank account. Now, the issue with this is that you need to tell QuickBooks about this fee and also to adjust for the fact that you actually got $100 from your customer. And you have to do that manually. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm in Stripe right now. I've kind of hidden things that you don't need to see, but I just wanted to show you in case it's helpful to see where you need to get the report because that's the first thing you need to do. You need to go to your report and you need to see how much your customers paid and how much the fees were. And so to do that, um, you go, you're, you know, you default to this home page and you'll go to balances and then you'll go to payouts on the left. And then you'll have a list of payouts in the middle and you'll click the one that's related. Um, as a note, a reminder, you know, Stripe lets you set it up so that you can get payouts or get payments from them either daily, weekly, or monthly. So it's possible that um, each of these payouts will represent more than one sale. So always keep that in mind. And so you will click the link that's, you know, the line of the payout that you're, you're, you're most interested in and you will scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and you will get to this transaction section. And this transaction section is where you find out more details of the call of the of the, the um, of the payout. <laughs> you will see the gross amount, you'll see the fee, and then total. So you want to make note of the gross amount, so the total amount that the, the customer paid you, and the fee. You can either keep this page open and have it kind of on the side. Having two monitors is helpful for this, or you can write it down somewhere. Um, but it really helps to have this information before you start to do what you're gonna do in QuickBooks Online. So um, you will note too that the total amount, so the net amount that you see in your bank will be the same as this total amount in this column here. Now that we have the Stripe um, gross income that came through, like the customer paid and the fee amounts, we're gonna go back to QuickBooks and we're gonna to navigate to our banking tab and our banking tab within that banking tab so we can see the transaction that came through in the bank feed for us to process. So I have an example here, this is not a real client, but I have an example here and I say that there's a Stripe deposit that came through and it was $95, which kind of goes along with the example I mentioned earlier. So Stripe sent us $95, but really the customer paid 100. So we have to tell Stripe to adjust our sales amount to be 100 and to reflect that we paid Stripe a fee of $5. So if we open up this transaction, it's going to come with this um, categorize tab information. And what we want to do, instead of adding the information just here directly, we want this transaction to be handled in two ways. We want there to be two pieces to this $95. So to do that, we're gonna click split and it's gonna pull up this um, page, which <clears throat> is basically when you want to have one transaction be sent to different accounts. Um, so in this case, we want this transaction to be sent partially to sales and then partially to the, um, the Stripe fee. So the first line we're gonna do is for the sales. So this could be sales, income, whatever your income account is where you wanna track that you receive money from your customer through Stripe. Um, I suggest instead of adding each customer as, as its own um, thing related to Stripe, I suggest just creating a Stripe customer as a vendor. So, I mean, I, 
I create to, to create a Stripe customer as a customer because this is money that is being being paid to us. And like I mentioned before, you can have multiple um, multiple customer payments in one Stripe payout. So it makes it a little easier to track this way. And then if you ever need to see details about the specific customers, you can see that in Stripe in the Stripe reports whenever you, you feel so moved. So I think this is a cleaner way to do it. So you make this Stripe customer, remember it's a customer, and you say save, and then you have the category is sales, so it's an income account. You can either use sales or you can use another, you can create an income account that makes more sense to your business, but just you can keep it as sales. You can make a description, here's where you could put kind of like sale of what, you know, like maybe you want to say what it was that the person purchased or um, just very briefly. So you can, if you, you know, when you're looking at your reports, you can see that information. That's not a bad, a, a, a problem to put that in here. And then you might not have class selected. So just forget that if you don't um, see that when you're looking at this split. And then for the amount, we're going to put in the amount that the customer actually paid, which was $100 per our example. And as you'll notice, this section down here changed. So the original amount is 95 because we only got 95 in, but we were saying, you know, for this line, we actually received $100 from the customer. So there's this kind of $5 difference that we need to account for. And as you could probably guess, that's where the Stripe payment fee, payment fee comes in, excuse me. So I would suggest, um, creating a Stripe vendor for this one because we're paying Stripe. And in case you want to see the details, it makes it a little bit easier for the reports to have it separated in that way. So um, so I would say Stripe vendor and then change the type to be vendor and then save. And then for here, instead of sales, we want to reflect that this was a um, payment processing fee or some people call it a merchant processing fee or something like that. It doesn't really matter what you call it as long as you understand that this is a fee that Stripe took out for, you know, the privilege of them handling the money from your client to you. So you can call this a payment processing fee and it might not exist, so you might have to add it. So you just click add and then remember, always open it up because it will default to bank and this is not a bank account. We are creating an expense. So scroll down and you find expense, which is at the end of the line. And then you just for detail type, which again, doesn't matter as much, but you can choose, you know, bank charges, or you can choose maybe like a finance cost or something. Um, again, that doesn't really matter so much, um, but you can click that, press save and close. And again, you can make a description if you'd like, and so for the amount, what we're going to do is this is going to actually be a negative. So even though it's applying to the, um, like it's adding to our expense, it's going to be a negative here. And the system knows that this means to add it to an expense. And you wouldn't really use a negative if you were just doing one line. Um, but in this case, we're adding it to the expense and we're deducting it from that $100. So if you look down here for the difference, when I press tab, now the difference is zero. So now we're saying we're splitting 100 and minus five, and that gets us to our $95 that we actually received in our bank account. So you click apply and accept, and now it's moved into the account. And if you wanna see what that looks like, we can go to our uh, profit and loss. So we went to reports and profit and loss. And I'm just going to have us look for today just so we can really streamline this. And I'm going to say run. Oh, you know what? Always make sure you have the right date range because I did it on the 17th, not today. And I think I did that before. So um, and then you can click cash, click run, and there we go. So see, it's showing the correct amount for our sales because we actually did have a customer pay us $100. So we need to reflect that. 
and then the payment processing fee, which was five, so it's an expense. So we have a net income of $95. So that is how you account for the Stripe fees. You can do that while you're going through the bank feed. You can do that um, depending on the frequency that you chose to have Stripe payments um, deducted to or, or sent to you. You know, you can do it as they come along. You can do it once a month. Um, but just make sure, you know, you start with the Stripe statement and you get that payouts details. You get the amount of the, 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 the total amount that the customer paid you and you get the fee. And then you put that into the um, actual transaction that came through and you split it. And um, then you'll have the correct full picture when you're running in the reports at the end of the year to see how much you actually got paid and how much the fees were. So I hope this helps, but let me know if you have any questions.